All right. Welcome back, everybody, to the Blake Builders Show <laughs> podcast, YouTube. Uh, today, we got episode five with Josh Holmgren. Josh is the co-owner of Renew Creations, located out in Washington. Is that right, Josh? Yep, Vancouver. We're just across the river from Portland. There you yep. go. There you go. So uh, <laughs> Josh and I go go way, well, not way back, but we go back two years ago and the whole world was, was different. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we, we met in January, January, February of 2020 mm -hmm. at the International Builder Show out in Vegas. Um, we yeah. met and uh, had a, a couple different, uh, I think we went to a couple different things together and then yep. um, just have stayed connected through the social media world and everything. Mm -hmm. um, Tell us a little bit about what, what your company is, what you guys do, what you specialize in. Yeah, um, we, we kind of planted our flag in remodel early on, um, pretty intentionally. There was a, a gap in the market that we saw locally here. Um, we, we serve all of Clark County, which is the southwest corner of Washington State. Mm -hmm. um, there's a couple of bordering counties that for the right projects we would, uh, we would head into. But uh, as a general rule, our work is right in Clark County. And so we have a lot of bleed over work from Portland. The Portland area has some really high end stuff and a ton of competition in the remodel market down there because there's a lot of old homes mm -hmm. um, and a lot of really high end homes. Uh, but we saw a gap here on this side of the river. Not a lot of the really good remodel firms from Portland wanted to brave the two bridges that get you across the river into into Washington state. Uh, and so there are a couple of other good remodel firms here locally for sure, but they're definitely undersized for the amount of, of homes that we're going to be hitting that remodel market. Uh, right. We have right. a couple of really big uh, build booms here in Clark County uh, in the eighties. And then again, in the early two thousands, mm -hmm. um, seems like we've kind of ended up actually mostly getting those early two thousands homes. So it's kind of that, that, first refresh is yep. what most of our of our work is uh, so that's really where we've kind of built the brand around and the business around and then always had an eye open for uh, when the right client and the right project comes along for a new construction uh, for shop builds for detached accessory dwelling units um, that has become more and more of our business as um, it started out just kind of being open to it and as we did more and more of them uh, it's kind of become its own its own part of the business. I mean, it, it integrates really nicely with all of our other systems, mm -hmm. all of our personnel. Uh, but it, that part wasn't really one that we set out to really market to, right. and it's become a good half of our revenue at this point. So, how many uh, how many employees do you have? Or uh, yeah, there's eleven of us total on the team right now. Uh, oh. So there's there's four of us. Uh, we, we kind of divide the company into two two parts. Four of us in the project development side. It's me and myself doing. Uh, sales meetings, handling at least the management of the marketing, uh, mm -hmm. and a little bit of drafting has been on my plate for a couple of years. But that's that's getting moved off the plate as we continue to grow and and get a little busier. Um, and then there's an interior designer. Uh, we have an office manager as well. And then my uh, one of my business partners, Josh. Yes, his name is also Josh. <laughs> um, he's uh, he does all of our project development around uh, estimating permit prep uh, and that kind of thing. And great, then there's great. six, nope, seven. There's 11 of us now. There's seven team members out in the field. Uh, we kind of run the, the project manager and site supervisor uh, format. So we have two project managers that are in trucks, scheduling and ordering mm -hmm. materials, meeting with clients, and then dedicated site supervisors um, that may have up to three jobs going at a time, depending on the scale. You know, if they're $150,000 remodels, uh, mm -hmm. they can handle a few of them. But if it's a million dollar remodel, they're there stuck going nowhere for yeah. <laughs> eight months. So, uh, yep. Yeah. Well, we don't, we don't do any remodels. We're all new builds, except for mm -hmm. uh, on the commercial side, we do uh, some remodel and, and tenant TI projects. Stuff. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah. what do you feel, what do you feel brings, what do you do differently than your competition? Um, if you were interviewing against mm -hmm. you know, one of your competitors, what do you guys feel you bring to the table? Um, I would say two things. Uh, we, we have invested really heavily in, in 
systems. Um, so mm -hmm. we use co-construct. Mm -hmm. um, it's a really robust software. We don't use it to its full potential, right. uh, but uh, it's always a, a moving target. We're trying to always improve on that. Um, so our, mm -hmm. our, that's, that really is a, a part of that project development phase. We, on a, you know, say a 500, $600,000 remodel project, you know, we're going to take eight to 10 months usually to develop that project to go from mm -hmm. making the sale and them committing to working with us to design revisions engineering all the interior selections uh, and when we're done on a like i said i'd say a half million dollar remodel project we'll have a build book that we've created um, spec book with all the specs for every part of the project that goes in there it's a binder about yay thick uh, of course, it's all also on co-construct uh, and then a set of you know, construction documents that are going to include interior drawings with every elevation of every wall that has cabinetry, light fixtures, anything like that. That's always all drawn out. Um, I think that's the biggest thing that we've seen. I, I, before I started as a GC, as a remodel GC, I had a much smaller company, a few buddies and I started uh, that we just did basically service two other remodelers in, in the area here, my, my now competition. Mm -hmm. um, we were a carpentry company and did a lot of exterior carpentry and fences, decks, framing, siding, roofing, that kind of thing. Um, and so I, I kind of got a little bit of a glimpse into that. And over time, I've had the opportunity to, uh, I guess, yeah, develop systems a little beyond what I saw yeah. uh, there. I just kind of remembered you know, what did I wish as a sub I had from mm -hmm. those GC firms? And then even more than that, it's been just listening to clients and, and connecting with people like you, other, yeah. other builders in the industry to see how, uh, how the big dogs are doing it. And Bounce, learning bouncing from that. ideas off of each other is huge. Yeah. Do you, do we yeah. use, uh, so we use builder trend, which builder trend obviously mm -hmm. purchased co-construct yep. last year at some point or two years yeah. ago. Yeah. Um, do you guys have a, do they have like a to-do feature on there also? I know yeah. Builder Trend does. Do you guys use that for your processes or how do you guys use that? Sometimes. Uh, it depends on which site manager we're talking about. Um, it's So we're in the middle of an evolution on that right now. Yeah. Uh, and we always are, but um, we have one site manager that doesn't need it, uh, mm -hmm. is dedicated to a project and just aces his stuff all in his head somehow yeah. Uh, yeah. the trouble is obviously with that you know, there's no trouble with that it's it's great for the company but it isn't a system necessarily it's right. not a system that's repeatable um mm -hmm. and so we've we've dabbled with the to-do feature and used it to some extent uh, yeah. but that really is part of the company that as we're looking at another evolution of growth here uh over the next 24 months or so uh with the work we have projected um, that we've had about six meetings recently with the, all the team members trying to really hone in on you know, how we're going to address specifically that. I mean, the, the, the management and the communication side with a, a lot higher volume. Yeah, no, it's, you're speaking, <laughs> speaking to me, man. It's, uh, we're trying to get those down. I, I have a lot of ideas up my head, trying to get them down on paper for everybody. Mm -hmm. And, uh, just, you know, if you have employee turnover, if you have, you're trying to grow and you want to hand them a document, mm -hmm. it's just to have that, you know, guide from A to Z on how to, whatever it is, once you get a contract signed, yeah. what's the next step, you know, yeah. and then it takes it bam, bam, bam. So, um, yeah, yeah. It's for us, the big shift was the, just the kind of how we've always done it was working until we hit a, until we hit a, about a eight jobs going at a time pace like once we mm -hmm. hit that like it was working fine to five to six we were managing it well we hit eight and the whole project development team was all tied up developing other new stuff so we couldn't jump in and backfill the issues at all uh and that that eighth project suffered we saw it and mm -hmm. had some meetings with that client specifically because they didn't get the experience that they thought they were going to get and that they should have gotten right uh working with us. And like, that was, that was the big wake up call. It's like, okay, time to, time to dive back in and say, it, it feels annoying to, to document everything and write to-do lists when, you know, you'll just be back out there tomorrow to do them. 
And there's all these, all these reasons not to take mm-hmm. that next step and put all those processes in place and live by them. Uh, but obviously at this point, it's going to have to happen because we've got nine and 10 projects on the calendar, you know, that kind of a pace running further out in the year. So yeah, it's easy to let something slip through the cracks. I mean, just the other day I caught myself, I'm like, Oh shoot, I forgot to do a certain task for a project. Like, you know, if I would have had that written down on a, on a list would have hopefully (laughs) would have, would have gotten done. So um, tell everybody a little bit about how COVID has affected your, you and your business, um, how people are, are they, you know, letting you in the house normally, or are you still having to mask up out there? Kind of what's, what's that look like or what has it looked like the last two years? Yeah. Well, so we're in Washington state, which is, uh, the, the temperature in the state as a general rule, uh, tends to be a little more, uh, cautious around, around the COVID measures. Um, mm-hmm. there certainly has been, uh, a lot more, um, you know, we're one of the states, uh, we still technically have a mask mandate in place right now. Um, we live in a county that's kind of the reddest county in a uh, pretty blue state. Uh, mm-hmm. And so there's some of that, some of that uh, uh, influence here. And so it's interesting. We, I, I think the, the jobs we've gotten, so much of our work is, is really large scopes of remodel work. And so while we've had a few projects that clients have been living in the home during the duration of the project, um, you know, most of them are going to be either a detached building that we've had over the last two years. The client will move out completely for the duration of the project, mm-hmm. uh, or they'll be completely secluded. You know, we'll have a, a temporary HVAC units and everything in our workspace, and we can completely that's- block the space off. So that's been kind of the, the main way we've dealt with it. Uh, now, we certainly have had a few clients that have said they're going to just hold off on the project for the next couple of years or until they they feel a little more comfortable and so that's happened a couple of times yeah um but as a general rule um yeah it's been it's it's kind of almost been business as normal uh from the client from the client uh yeah. side of things um with just a few obviously when either clients or team members uh, have recently been been in contact with something. We had to reschedule some meetings or something like that. Yeah. Um, but you know, luckily we've not had anything really, you know, dramatic or, or anything like that on, on that side. So do you, um, do you feel like in 2020, at least the second half, did you guys slow down a lot because of COVID or not really? No, no, we, um, so we had so much work kind of in the hopper with clients that really wanted to keep things moving even Mm -hmm. through throughout everything that um, it was just kind of the the initial couple of months uh, when you know we were trying to figure out you know how do we well a how do we get people's houses back together because we were we had some projects in really fragile states at the time that we had a, a major shutdown here i mean nobody could drive nobody nothing like it was locked down completely um and so we were trying to negotiate that, figure out what the mandates really were all about at that time. Mm-hmm. And by the time we kind of got it figured out, things started opening back up a little. Construction was deemed a essential service. So we were able to kind of keep some things moving. And um, you know, obviously we took a, a two month hit to our, our um, finances, which was not an easy thing to do. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, two months of a, uh, a business like ours, you know, we do three million to you know four million bucks a year or so, mm-hmm. um, and that makes for a, a good sized overhead yeah. bite to to shell out every month. Yeah. Um, so that was a that was something to to jump over, of course. But uh, luckily, we had recovered by the end of the year, and projects were back on track. We finished the year out really nicely in in 2020 with. You know, made an eight percent net anyways it wasn't where it could have been but um better than certainly it was so much better than than so many of the other industries that you know we work around and, and with i mean we feel real blessed to have come through it all as, as well as we did so yeah 100 percent, 100 percent. um yeah. well i appreciate you hopping on here is there anything else you'd like to share with uh the audience today um no i not other than it's nice to have these chats whenever uh 
whenever people are, are up for it. I, I have a couple of builder buddies like you that we circle up on Zoom calls every once in a while. And uh, and it's been, it's kind of, it's annoying that it has to be Zoom calls so much lately, but it is also nice to have the tool because I know I, I don't get out of the out of the office as often as I could and certainly mm -hmm. hard to get across the country to talk to some of the guys Absolutely. Uh, these days. So yeah, uh, just looking forward to doing this in Vegas next yeah. year when we can finally get back together with everybody. Yeah, I think we're going to bring yeah. a couple of our employees out there too and we'll be cool. out there. Um, just so everybody's aware, if you're not following Josh on uh, LinkedIn, he's got some awesome mm -hmm. videos that you guys do. Um, oh, you, thanks. You guys do really good on your social media as well. So thank you. Uh, it's a yeah, it's a work in progress, but yeah, I'd love love for folks to follow and connect on there. I mean, the big thing I, I do with that, it's it's less of a marketing engine for me. Uh, it's more of a just an online billboard if people do yep. want to go on and see some stuff. But yep. I do a lot of connecting with other builders on online, and that's kind of the primary thing I actually use it for now at this point. Yeah, absolutely. Well, if anybody's looking at doing remodeling up there in the in the Washington Bank area, um, yeah reach out to Josh. They'd love to talk to you. So, yeah. And I, I'll do this again sometime. I, uh, uh, we've got some, some potentially some really big changes coming to the company, uh, over the next while. So and will circle go. up again in six months and, and chat again. I, there'd be, uh, I've got some new build questions for you, I'm sure. So sounds, sounds great. Well, thanks so much for All coming right. on here cool. and we will, uh, we'll catch up with you soon. All right. Thanks. Yep. Thank you.